Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a first look at the Red Mage job coming out in Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. I had hoped to have had this video out earlier, however, I recorded all of my voiceovers for it and was preparing to edit when I found out some new information that unfortunately invalidated a lot of what I recorded, and so I wanted to make sure the video was as accurate as possible. Um, I rewrote my scripts, and now I am re-recording all of these lines, so hopefully this video helps you guys out. Again, I'm so sorry for the delay, and without further ado, let's dive right in. To kick things off here, we are going to divide the video into three separate sections, mainly because while Red Mage itself isn't particularly difficult to play, I want to make sure everything is as accurately explained as possible before I try and explain how it all fits together. So first we're going to discuss the core mechanics of Red Mage, then we are going to discuss all of its spells and abilities, and then we are going to discuss how everything fits together. First up, we have the black and white mana gauge. This is the core feature of the Red Mage job and what you will essentially be basing all of your gameplay around. This functions very simply. Certain spells will grant black mana, other spells will grant white mana, and a few specific spells will grant both black and white mana in equal amounts. The idea of the Red Mage job is to slowly balance this scale up, have it slightly skewed one way or the other, and then expend the mana on a special chain of abilities that will allow for the use of a finisher. The key point to this though, is that they cannot be too skewed heavily in one direction or the other. I don't believe there's concrete information out there quite yet as to how this functions, but it seems if you are 30 points of mana higher in one direction or the other, it will significantly hamper your ability to generate mana of the lower value. So ideally, you're going to want to keep your mana as close as possible, but in the end, have one that's a few points higher than the other before you use your DPS rotation to expend it. The second and final core mechanic of the Red Mage job is dual casting. Dual casting allows for the instantaneous casting of any spell with a cast time. In a sense, it is the exact same as Swift Cast, however, it does not have a cooldown, but instead has a unique condition to proc it. In order to obtain a dual cast, you must cast a spell with a cast bar. To further clarify, if you dual cast a spell or you swift cast a spell, it removes the cast bar, therefore that cannot proc a dual cast. However, if you quote unquote hard cast a spell, which means you execute the full length of the cast bar, you will then be granted a dual cast proc which you can use to instant cast another spell. Next up, we're going to discuss all of Red Mage's spells and abilities, but we're going to save their applications and their specific place in the Red Mage priority system until the next section of the video. So for now, please just sit back and get a good feel for what the spells do themselves individually. First up, we have Jolt 1 and or Jolt 2 when it gets replaced at a higher level. This is a basic non-aspected spell that grants a equal amount of both black and white mana. This is a staple spell of the Red Mage job and you will certainly be using it quite often. Upon reaching level 66, the spell Impact is unlocked and this is a combo off of Jolt 2. However, it should be noted that Impact, while dealing more potency overall, does not grant black or white mana. Next up, we have the core elemental spells of Red Mage, the main bread and butter of Red Mage's DPS, it would seem. For white magic, we have Ver Arrow, and for black magic, we have Ver Thunder. Both of these abilities, however, have a unique property in that they have a 50% chance to proc the next spell in their respective combo chains, Ver Stone and Ver Fire, respectively. Both of the base spells, Fair Arrow and Fair Thunder, have a very long cast time, and these abilities are always going to be cast by using a dual cast proc. Next up, we have Red Mage's melee combo chain. This is a very, very important part of the job. However, it is not something you will use in your normal rotation. The damage it deals is fairly low, and it costs TP to execute, but upon obtaining enough black and white mana gauge, you can expend it to enhance this combo chain, causing it to deal more damage and allowing you to combo into two different finishers. Before we discuss those, however, it should be noted that Red Mage also has a gap closer and a backstep. Ideally, you will use the gap closer to get close, do your melee combo, disengage with the backstep, and then you will instant cast one of these two finishers. And without any delay, let's discuss what those do. First, we have Ver Flare, a black magic spell, and then we have Ver Holy, a white magic spell. In a sense, these do the exact same thing. 
However, which one you use is entirely dependent upon which of your two mana gauges is currently higher. For example, if you have 81 black mana and 80 white mana, when you execute this rotation, you will want to use your white mana spender, which is very holy, because black mana is higher. The reason for this is if you use the spell opposite of whichever gauge is currently higher when you execute your melee combo, it will have a 100% chance of proccing the two-step elemental spell finisher from your normal spell casts. For example, Ver Holy will proc Ver Stone, and Ver Flare will proc Ver Fire. And last up in our single target section, we have this single target OGCD. You can just weave this in wherever in your rotation for additional damage. Very straightforward, very simple, nothing more to it. Moving right along, we can discuss Red Mage's AoE capabilities. First up, we have its primary form of AoE damage, which is Scatter. This increases both black and white mana by three. However, upon successful casting of Scatter, you will one, obtain a dual cast, and two, obtain enhanced Scatter which is the next scatter you cast will increase your black and white mana by eight each instead of three. So Red Mage's primary AoE DPS is to just spam the spell over and over again. However, you can then expend the absurd amounts of black and white mana you will be obtaining on Mouline, which is a melee AoE ability. Keep in mind, this is a frontal cone. However, if you have enough black and white mana over 30 each, you will enhance this Mouline. I'm really sorry I don't have the thumbnail for this, but it deals increased damage at the expense of black or white mana. So essentially, it is just a GCD to dump some of your mana during AoE to deal increased damage before you move back into doing your scatter rotation. There is also one OGCD AoE ability that you can weave into your AoE rotation. This can also just be weaved into your normal single target rotation for more damage as well. Next up, we have Red Mage's buffs, and then we will finish off with its utility. The first buff is Acceleration. This is a very simple ability, a relatively short cooldown, but what this does is it allows your next elemental spell to proc its second step combo. So if you use it, um, either Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder will guarantee a proc of Ver Stone or Ver Fire, respectively. Very straightforward, very easy to use. Modification is a very potent cooldown on a two minute timer but this will effectively double whatever your current mana gauge is. I know the tooltip here says doubles the rate at which your balance gauge increases. However, it should be noted that this just, as of right now, flat out doubles the gauge instantaneously. So if you have 40-40, it will bump it up to 80-80. If you have 25-30, it'll bump it up to 50-60. It should also be noted that this will reset the cooldown on core core and Deplacement, which is your Gap Closer and Backstep, respectively. Last up, we have Embolden, and this is Red Mage's primary group utility. This is an ability that will increase your own magic damage dealt by 20% and the physical damage dealt by nearby party members by 10%. Both of these effects are reduced by 20% every 4 seconds and the buff lasts for 20. And last up, we have Red Mage's remaining utility spells. We have Ver Cure, which is actually a very potent cure. A lot of people were wondering if this is mind-based or intellect-based. Personally, I believe this to be intellect-based. As you can see here in this clip, uh, my Veracure heals me for about 5,000 HP non-crit out of roughly 23,000 HP. And since by hard casting a Veracure, you get an instant dual cast afterwards, you can cast two Veracures back-to-back in the same GCD, and that's roughly 10k HP healed at level 64. Uh, which is, you know, close to 50% of your HP. This is a very, very potent cure for what it's worth. Of course, we also have Ver Raise, which is just a standard raise. You can dual cast this spell. However, it has a very big MP cost, so if you're raising a lot of people, you are going to be absolutely spent. And with Red Mage's MP generation not being super amazing, uh, doing this will definitely be very, very difficult to come back from. And last, we have Tether, which is very simply just an AoE bind on the target and any enemies nearby it. Straightforward, very simple in application, nothing else to it. But that being said, that covers all of the spells. Now let's take a second to discuss how all of these weave together to make Red Mage a functioning job. So again, to reiterate from the previous sections, the core concept of Red Mage is to generate black and white mana, which you then expend on your melee combo to get access to a very potent finisher ability. With that in mind, let's dive right in. Jolt 2 is going to be your primary spell to activate dual cast, assuming you do not already have a proc existing. 
The reason for this is both of the elemental spells, Ver Arrow and Ver Thunder, have very long cast times, almost five seconds. So you will not be hard casting these spells unless maybe during a pre-pull on a boss. Joel 2 also has the benefit of adding a small amount of black and white mana, and it does combo into Impact, which deals more potency and grants no mana. But that being said, you will obtain a dual cast from Jolt 2, and then you can expend that on either Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder, depending on which mana you need at that point in time. You have a 50% chance of proccing either Ver Stone or Ver Fire, depending on which elemental spell you use. And this spell does have a cast time, however, it's closer to Jolt 2. Therefore, this can also be hard cast. And that means you will obtain a dual cast, which you can then reinvest back into the other element or the same element. And so Red Mage's base rotation is essentially Jolt 2 for dual cast, either Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder. If you have a proc, hard cast either Ver Stone or Ver Fire. You get a dual cast from that and then reinvest it in another Ver Arrow or a Ver Thunder. However, if you do not get a proc, you can revert back to Jolt 2 or Impact, get a dual cast, rinse repeat over and over again. Once you reach 80 black mana and 80 white mana, you can then execute your melee combo. If you try any sooner than that, you will not be able to finish it and you will not proc the finisher that is tied to it. However, it's important to note that you will want at least one mana higher in one of your elements, whether it's 81 black mana and 80 white, or 81 white and 80 black. The reason for this, again, is because the finisher you use will have a 100% chance of proccing either Ver Fire or Ver Stone if its opposing element is at least one point higher in the gauge. And honestly, that's about all there is to it outside of weaving in your OGCDs and popping your buffs when applicable. As a player who had, one, very little casting experience and in fact hated casting, and two, had just no idea about the job, period. Red Mage, to me, felt like the easiest by far to understand once I played it for a little bit, but that does not detract from how fun the job is. I cannot stress that enough. So again, to further clarify, I don't like casting. I've never liked playing casting jobs. I've, I've never, you know, I have summoner leveled. I had black mage leveled in 1.0, but I don't like them. I don't really enjoy casting. I like playing melee and everything like that. And though red mage has a melee capability to it, it's very, very tiny and you don't really use it a whole lot. It's a very, you know, specific situation in which you melee. But all that aside, I actually had fun playing Red Mage. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely going to have a very high skill ceiling to properly manage your, your MP and to get the most efficient rotation out of it, but it will be very accessible to even casual players. So if you're looking forward to Red Mage, please continue to get hype. It's a lot of fun. Take it from me. And like the last video, I'm going to leave you off with a little bit of uninterrupted gameplay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped out a little bit. Um, I'm really sorry if this didn't seem as good as the Samurai one. I spent a lot more time on Samurai than I did on Red Mage at the event itself. So, again, I'm so sorry. But thank you for watching. Take care, and I will see you again in the next video.